Hello, welcome to my rainy studio. Now, one of the things that I get asked most often is what supplies I'm using for my work and what I've been buying recently. So I thought I'd start making some nice easy videos about that. Now, this video isn't sponsored, but it does contain some gifted items and there are some affiliate links for the products in the description below. Now I'm going to show you some of my favourite art products and books that I've been looking at this spring. Okay, I'm going to start with an art book today. The book is called Nature's Palette, a colour reference system from the natural world. This isn't a brand new book from this year, it came out in 2021, so it's a couple of years old now. But it took a while for it to come onto my radar before I asked for it as a Christmas present. The premise of this book is an old colour system that was devised in 1774 by German geologist Abraham Gottlob Werner. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that quite right. And he, because he was a geologist, he based this colour system on the properties of minerals, mostly so that he and his colleagues and people interested in geology could identify the minerals. It wasn't so much to do with art but more as an identification system. Then in the 1800s, a Scottish artist, Patrick Syme, expanded this and he started looking for the colours that you can find also in other areas of nature. So in birds, bird eggs, shells and plants. As you go through the book, you see these systems and what's really gorgeous about this is that you've got the number within the system, the name of the colour, and a little swatch of the colour itself, then an animal that it's associated with, a vegetable or a plant that it's associated with, and a mineral as well. And through this book you've got these wonderful plates that are mostly from 18th century and early 19th century artists that have used this colour in their work. So for anyone like us nature journalists, people who are interested in the expression of nature through art, this book is such a wonderful resource and one of the things that I'm planning to do with it is to mix up some of these colours using the Derwent Ink Tents set. As you go to the back of this book, so I'll just flick through a few more pages here just so you can see just how beautiful this is. Now we'll go to the back and right at the end here before the index you've got these colour swatches here that are Symes colours as described in this book and you've got a CMYK code to make the colour so that's useful for digital art and for looking it up on the computer the Pantone colour and then there's also some different brands written here so you've got Winsor & Newton and Cowan Dush and Little Green and & Farrow and & Ball so far for artists and for people who are wanting to paint their homes presumably or to paint furniture or something in these interesting natural colours. But because I work mainly in these Derwent Inktense pencils and I'm very happy to see recently that Derwent have brought out uh, a few more colours. I think it was it was 72 in the box that I got which is this one and now they've increased that to 100 so I have another 28 colours to try and to work with now. There's so much of interest in this book and I think I'm going to be reading it and using it as a reference for many years. I might make another video about mixing up some of these colours in ink tents if you're interested in that. Just let me know in the comments. I think I've barely touched the surface of this amazing book and I plan to spend a lot more time with it this year. I think it's an absolute necessity for anybody who's interested in colour theory, nature and art. So I'm going to have a little go with my Derwent ink tents now, reproducing one of the colours that are in the book. So I've been looking at the teals recently, the teal ducks, and I thought that may, they, maybe they would be a nice thing to do. And the teal are mentioned here on this page, under emerald green. And there's a plate of some teals here, which is a John Gould illustration. It says emerald green is visible on the beauty spot on the wing of the Eurasian teal and I'd say also in the when it catches the light and this part on its head this wonderful distinctive marking you can see a whole range of greens in there and I'm just going to do a little drawing of the bird's head and try out a few other products as I go along. I've got a new pen to show you now. This is an aluminium bolt action slimline pen by Bastion. The package isn't too heavy which is a good sign and this is it. It's quite a solid little thing actually. It's got like a quick release catch on it. It's 
quite easy to use. This red bead on the top, let's take that off and then let's see how this writes. By the way, the book I'm using here today is a Cardi Papers fat book. I'm going to be making a hardback cover for this book at some point over the next few months. If that's something you'd like to see on the channel, just let me know. I'm just putting the date down. Okay, so it's not a fine liner pen. This is more like the kind of pens that you'd write with in, the, in a regular journal, but it does write very well on this Cardi paper. Looks pretty good. Let's try it on something else. So this is the kind of book I normally write in. You see it's got all the scripts inside for my online course. And that was written in these little bics. So most of the time when I'm working or what I've been doing so far is I've been buying a ridiculous number of these little bic pens and constantly losing them around the house. I've always either got too many of them or I haven't got enough of them and you know, one will stop working. And I think my biggest issue with having so many of these on the go is just the amount of plastic that we've got here. And I kind of wanted to go to a pen that I can just use a simple refill like this. One that I can kind of just keep coming back to time and time again. And that's actually kind of worth looking after and keeping safe. And I can use it to do all of my indoor kind of writing. It's very smooth and easy to write with. It feels really nice in the hand. Compared with the plastic, it just has a nicer feel in the hand. It's a little bit heavier, a little bit more weight, but this is the slimline one. So of the models that are available on the website, this is the one that appealed to me the most. It's lightweight, it's slimline and it's aluminium. And it writes really beautifully. Yeah, I'm very fond of this. And if I want to change it, change the nib over. Just done and does like that. So this little spring comes out of here. Just pop that back in, pop the pen into there and that's what's going to give it this, the spring action. Release, push that down into the spring and then just throw that down like that. There we go. I've just swapped it over now for the gel nib. So this is a this is the, the regular standard ink and the one that I've got in the pen now is the gel. So the gel pen, this writes a lot more like I'm used to in my uh, nature journaling work. It writes a lot more like a fine liner. Now the difference is of course that this is a water-based ink that comes with these bastion pens. So I wouldn't recommend buying one of these if you're going to use it with water-based media, watercolour, ink tents, anything like that. Anything that's going to get wet basically, it doesn't dry permanent and it will float away. You can see the difference here between the two inks. This is the standard ink and this is the gel ink. And I much prefer the gel personally. And although this is a watercolour paper, it does write very well on it, even though it's intended for your typical kind of journal and standard untextured paper. This looks really great in my indoor book. And this might finally get me away from my terrible habit with billions of bits. Now Bastion have very kindly given a discount code which you can find in the description below. I very highly recommend that you use the gel ink rather than the standard. I just really like the way that this, this pen writes. It's got a darker colour. So it's a definitely a darker black and just looks really good. It feels very, very smooth to write with and I've just really enjoyed testing this little product out. So if you're interested in that, the link to purchase it is in the description below and there is a 20% discount code there that you can use. Now, let's get on with the painting of the teal duck. Let's start with these Derwent line makers. I've spoken about these before on the channel. They're definitely one of my favourite fine liners for use with water-based media. Now for these, I've got two sizes. I've got the 0 0.1 and the 0 0.3. And my favourite thing about these particular ones is that they are a graphite colour. The nice thing about the graphite is that it's a very subtle line. It's very much like having a pencil line. Now I'm going to draw this and you can listen to the rain come down on my studio roof. Well, I've put the pencil lines on first and I'm now just going over them with my line maker. 
really nice thing about this is that it's a very subtle kind of colour. So when you're using it with Derwent ink tents, you tend to kind of lose the lines. And any lines that show look like little pencil marks rather than big black dark fine liner mark. I've been using these in my latest nature journaling project and I just really enjoy the subtlety of them. They look beautiful with watercolour or with coloured pencil. So there is the drawing of my teal. Now I'm going to get out my Derwent Inktense pencils and I'm going to use a few different colours here to work on my teal. I'm going to pick a few colours. Now there is one in the Derwent Ink Tents set that's called Teal Green. I want to see how close that one is to the teal. We've got Mallard Green as well. Now I'm just going to take Felt Green and Hooker's Green for a more blue tone. So we've got these two as well. And then I'm going to go for a, let's have Deep Indigo for the colours on the top of the head I'm going to go for red oxide and willow and I haven't got too much to do on the back but I'm just going to take Payne's grey as well for the back and a little bit of tan. I've got something new to show you for colour mixing. For so many years I've been putting my Derwent Inktense pencils onto a piece of paper like this and then lifting the colour of a water brush. And as you can see, I've been doing this a long time. I've got pages and pages of these palettes. Now, I recently was told, or I found out about, this product, which is the Caran d'Ache Aquel palette. And I haven't used it yet. I thought I'd give it a little go today. So let's get it out. Now, this is an interesting thing, because we've got a smooth side here, and we've got a rough side. And this rough side, this textured side, is where I'm going to be able to draw with my Derwent ink tents, mix it on this palette, and then put it down onto my paper, just as you would with a watercolour in a watercolour palette or some acrylics on some plastic. And I believe you can use this other side for some of these other media. Probably acrylics would work well on here, as you should be able to peel them off nicely afterwards. I'm going to have a little go at this, so let's put down, it goes on quite easy. I wonder, yeah I could even write my colours next to it with the colour itself if I want to, which I've done here, and then we've got the mallard green. There we are, they're all written out on my palette. This is going to be interesting. I have here my water brush. This is an Artezza water brush. They're quite cheap on Amazon, but they're a nice quality water brush and they come in a pack of different sizes. So immediately the colour lifts. And it, the lovely thing about this is it isn't just soaking into the paper like it normally does for me. It's going to stay live so there's less wastage. The one issue of using bits of paper like this is that everything that's now on this bit of paper is kind of wasted pigment. Paper is great to be able to mix the colours on the paper and be able to see exactly what you're going to get. That is really useful. But it does look like on here what we're seeing of the wet paint on this palette is enough information to then know what we're going to get when we put it onto the paper. I always clean my water brushes on my hand like this. See how bright these colours are. What I tend to like to do when I'm trying new things out like this is to draw the palette out to kind of show what the paint side I'm using right beside my image. So even though I'm going to mix a few of these together, I want to show them 
in their raw state next to my bird that I'm drawing. It also looks really nice when you go back through your sketchbooks later. You can see all of the work that you've done and you can actually go back and find out exactly which colours you used. Whereas if you didn't have that record, it's quite hard to know. Excellent way to use a sketchbook. Especially when it's in the development of a piece of work, a piece of larger scale work perhaps. Or a more detailed journal page. Let's write down what these are and for that I'm going to go back to my Bastion pen. Let's get going with this painting. These Scrim watercolours, they're a wonderful German watercolour brand. They're called Sapphire Shifters. And these ones I just bought myself as a, a little present. I'm just going to have a little go at them to see how they come out. And I might be able to use them on the head of my teal too. Wow, these are incredible. I have no idea how this shine is accomplished, whether there's some glitter in the paint or, or something like that. But they're kind of a wonderful greenish shimmer, the way that catches the light. And when you look at it flat on without any light coming onto it, it looks almost grey. Then as, as the light comes through it, it kind of goes this wonderful green. This is the pink one. And my glittery hand as I wash the brushes off. Let's try the blue. I'm thinking of using these in combination with the Derwent ink tents. Putting a layer of this over the top to give it just that extra shimmer. And there's certain subjects that would really benefit from this certain birds that have an iridescence to them, like magpies, these teals and mallard, and also shells and things like this. The last one is this golden. They're very special, these paints. These ones, they, they're quite big pans, so I paid a reasonable amount. I think they were about, I think these ones were on a sale, and they were about £50 for both of these. This second lot, these are more pearlescent than shimmering and colour shifting. And I'm particularly interested in these green ones. You see the key difference between these two, the way that this catches the light, it doesn't have the glitter in it, but it still catches the light just as much, it's still very iridescent metallic. This is going to give a lot of shine to white. So it's a completely transparent one, but it's got that wonderful shine to it. And I imagine that laid over the top of any colour, that's just going to look lovely. I particularly like the name of this, this little set, Jewels of the Sky. It's just perfect for painting bird feathers. And this final blue here would be wonderful for peacocks. How these catch the light. I hope that comes across in the camera here. Pretty certain that this white is my favourite. Just making a few more notes on the new palette. The sapphire shifters and the jewels of the sky. I'm now going to have a little go using them on the top of this drawing. I'm just going to put another layer of ink tents over the top. These have dried out overnight. I'm just going to liven them up a little bit again. Derwent ink tents pencils work best when you build up in layers like this, letting them dry in between the layers. I'm really enjoying using this palette with the ink tents pencils instead of another bit of paper. 
it's a bit like more like using a watercolour palette I'm able to liven the colours up again I'm going to be using this palette a lot I think from now on it's certainly going to save me a lot of paper and a lot of the pigment from the pencils too The use of these links helps support the channel and the other projects that I'm doing. So thank you so much if you do click on through and make a purchase. All of the items I've discussed in this video are things that I love and that have brought me joy these last few months. I hope you enjoy them too. Let me know what you think of any of these products in the comments below. And if there's anything that you'd like to recommend for me to review in the future, just let me know and I'll see if I can get to it for you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.